You might not know that you can take your Apple Calendar from this to this, or that your reminders and tasks can sync to your calendar too. You can also add an interactive to-do list widget right from your phone or your Mac's home screen. Apple Calendar and Apple Reminders are two apps I use day in and day out for managing both my personal and professional life, and each help calm the chaos of my brain. I'm also sharing free downloads throughout this video to help you achieve your ideal calendar and reminder setup. You can make both of these apps not just efficient for your own workflow, but genuinely delightful to use and look at too. So let's jump in. Starting with the Reminders app. Most people throw their random random thoughts and ideas in the notes app, but for me, it's in reminders because I love a checklist. So here's a look at all of the lists I've created. The today list is where I like to add my tasks of the day. Most of the ones I think I will forget. Save for later is what I'm using as a bookmark or reading list kind of manager. If there's a cool post someone shared that I think was particularly resourceful on threads, for instance, I like to share it directly to this list and create a reminder from it. I find that I never refer back to links or pages I save until I started using reminders in this way. I have a home reno list that is perfect for the subtasks feature, mainly because I want to see the tasks by room. And because this list is so long and growing by the day, I can tap these toggles to show or hide additional subtasks to check off as I complete them. I have the rooms as a task because I want to be able to check off the entire room as I complete it rather than just the subtasks for each room. But if you prefer to categorize it using simple headings, you can do so by tapping the three dots and then add section to create headers for your subtasks to live inside. Errands is a special list type in reminders and that's because of groceries. So I need to write out what I need to replace in my pantry. Then I can just type that out and it automatically categorizes it for me to help me maximize my time at different sections in the actual grocery store. Usually that's how it works. When you go to create a new reminders list, which you can do by tapping add list, you can choose the groceries list type from this dropdown. When creating a new list, you can customize the icon or choose an emoji and then one of these preset colors. In the future, I'd love to be able to set my own custom color. One thing I love to do when making a new list is to choose my emoji and then selecting the color to accent that emoji. I just find that especially pleasing to look at. And then I can add the reminders I need to my to-do list. To create subtasks, you'll just press and hold and then drag on top. If you press the little info icon, you can add more to your reminder. You can add notes, a URL, and even images. Mark as priority, which you can use later to sort all of the tasks across your different lists by priority if that tickles your brain. Flag it, which adds this flag icon to your reminder, and then a date and time, which you'll discover adds this reminder to your Apple Calendar. When you toggle the date, you'll have additional options like setting the reminder to repeat or to remind yourself early from the date and time that you've set it for. So if you add a test to your reminders list, like prepare meeting notes and you want to be alerted of it that day or the day before, you can set that from here. These features are great if you have recurring tasks or if you like making daily or weekly reset lists. But you can also change the list if you need to move a task. And you can also add subtasks under this reminder. Perhaps what is one of the most coolest and probably most underused features of reminders is the location and when messaging functions. You can choose to be alerted of this reminder in relation to a specific location, such as getting in and out of your car, your current location, your home, or even any custom location that you'd like to set. So if you're at work, you can set to receive a reminder when your phone sees that you have arrived at home. Super cool. When messaging is pretty straightforward, you can ask to be reminded of whatever the reminder is that you've created when messaging a specific person, and it will prompt you to choose that person when you toggle this on. If you're a fan of using tags, you'll be happy to know that they are alive and well in reminders, just not in my reminders. You can also sort tasks by these tags and see them all in one view, regardless of the list that they are located in. Tags are also a great use case for smart lists. A smart list is when you create custom filters to display your reminders. 
And while you can filter your lists by tags, you can also filter them by date and time. Great for creating an upcoming or past due list as well as flags, priority, or including and excluding specific lists. So you have seven filter options, each with their own options within, making for a lot of highly specific combinations that you can make for your smart lists. You'll know it's a smart list when it looks like this. Now, I am a big list person, and let's say you stand a Kanban board. You can convert your list to a board view by tapping these three dots on your list and then choosing view as columns. There are a lot of useful ways Kanban boards can be used, and you can recreate that here in Reminders. I find that these column views look best on iPad and Mac for obvious reasons. If you use section headers like I mentioned previously, this is what Reminders uses as the column header, so it will seamlessly create those boards for you. Otherwise, you can create them from scratch after switching to the column view. If you want to collaborate on a Reminders list, let's say a super amazing project Kanban board, tap the share icon and choose the people you'd like to invite. When it comes to actually organizing your tasks in a list, you can press and hold and then drag to rearrange the order or even choose to sort by due date, when you created the task, priority, or alphabetically. You can also choose to show or hide your completed task on a list too from the same menu. Now that we have our list created and ready to go, you might notice that you have a ton of lists that is overwhelming for you to look at, or maybe you just wanna organize it even further. And you actually can in a group, you can group these together by long pressing on a list and then dragging on top. From here, you can include more and name your list group. You can also reorder your list by long pressing and dragging to rearrange or by tapping these three dots and then edit lists. You can then tap these handles to rearrange. You'll notice you can now select or deselect these pinned lists here and even add the lists you created to the very top. So I can add my today reminders list, for example, and quickly jump into that list from its new pinned spot. You can also long press and choose to pin to a list at the top two, long press to unpin or hide pinned lists when you need to switch it up. If you made a killer list, you can actually save it as a template to use later when you create a new list. I created this Kanban template that you can use and add to your own reminders, by the way, and you'll find that linked in the description. Your Reminders app is set up for maximum efficiency, but it won't matter all too much if you never see your tasks or you ignore the reminders alerts that you've set. Or maybe you just wanna check things off without opening the app every single time. Edit your home screen and then add one of the reminders widgets to check off your to-do list right from the home screen or your lock screen. Obviously, nothing beats seeing everything you need to remember in a calendar view when it comes to planning and organizing your life. After using so many different automated digital calendars, App Calendar is the one I always come back to. I love a good PDF digital planner, my Cyberry digital planner to be exact, but I still put everything in Apple Calendar. Here's a look at my calendar. I have fully switched over to Apple Calendar, so these are all separate calendars I've created through iCloud, so everything syncs across my devices. But before switching fully to Apple Calendar, I actually linked all of my calendars on Google, on all of my different 200 Google accounts to the Apple Calendar app. And you can do this too. So if you're fully inside Google Calendar and you don't wanna fully switch over and recreate all of your calendars, you can tie those accounts into Apple Calendar. And you can do so by heading to settings. Here's where you can toggle on and off week numbers, override time zones, change the default calendar, and choose the day you prefer your calendar to start your week on. But under calendar accounts is where you can add your Google, your Yahoo, your AOL accounts to see your calendars. You're not actually locked into using Apple's iCloud calendar at all. And from here, I can tap into each account and toggle on and off which accounts I want to appear for my calendars. If you're on Mac, if you click calendar, click add account to add your accounts or accounts to make your changes. So just to be super clear, you can feed your Google or Microsoft calendars into the Apple Calendars app. So you don't have to settle for a calendar you can only access via a web browser or one that just has a really ugly interface. Sorry, Google. From the calendar app, you can toggle which calendars you'd like to be visible. If you tap info on iPhone slash iPad or right click on Mac, you can share that calendar with another person. 
I have a shared family calendar with my husband, which helps us a lot for keeping track of appointments, events, and even date nights. If there's a calendar you don't want to get alerts for, you can toggle that off here too. And if you want the public to have your 411 on your availability or what you're up to, you can create a public calendar that's view only. This can be good for sharing office hours or deadlines for assignments if you're a teacher, for example, or when you are in and out of the office if you're in corporate. Just to give a few examples. This is also the place where you can choose from a preset color, which are extremely bright, or choose a custom color. And this is how you can make your calendar look good. Have it match your vibe, have it be fun and extremely vibrant, or cozy and calming. If you need some color palette inspiration, Pinterest is a great place to do that, but I have also created a fun color guide with a variety of combinations and palettes for you to check out. And you'll find the exact colors I am using inside that color guide if you wanna match my calendar setup, linked in the description below. On iPhone slash iPad, you can pinch to change how your calendar appears. You can also choose this icon here, whether you want to see compact, stacked, details, or in a list view. If I tap into a day, I can also choose to view it as a single day, a multi-day, or a list as well. On Mac, I can choose day, week, month, or year for different calendar views. And one tip you might find particularly helpful on Mac is you can press Command Plus or Command Minus to increase or decrease the text size of your calendar events. Now, let's add an event to our calendar. Tap the plus button and here is where you'd write the event, the location if needed, or a video URL link. Making an all day event will make the event appear on your calendar like this. And scheduled events look like this. Travel time is cool because you can actually build in time you need to walk, bike, or drive between things you have scheduled on your calendar. If you have an event that repeats, like for me, I have to switch out my Invisalign trays every Wednesday, you can create a repeat event and set it to end at a specific time or continue indefinitely. My default calendar is set to family, but my specific event needs to go under my meetings calendar. So I'll just change that here. And then I can invite people to my event if I need to. Set an alert if I need a reminder before or at the time of my event. And there is additional space for adding attachments, URL or notes. You'll notice that you can actually create a reminder from this same place as well to add to your calendar. Reminders acts as a task on your calendar for you to check off. Here's what that looks like on Mac, by the way. Now with my calendar, I used to do a lot more time blocking, but have that for my PDF digital planner now. And I just put everything else in Apple Calendar. But I still have it set up for me to be able to time block at any time. And I do that with the routines calendar that I toggle visibility for, and you can see that I've actually added a recurring event for both my morning and evening routine. I like to sprinkle in emojis for fun and sometimes for relevancy. So that is one way you can personalize your calendar and make it more delightful to look at. If you're a student or someone who relies heavily on time blocking, you'll love Apple Calendar for creating separate calendars for each class or project type that you have, and then adding reminder tasks to check off throughout your week. Apple Calendar also works great with keeping track of shared meetings or scheduled video calls. Once I get an email with a meeting invite, Apple Calendar pulls that in under inbox. And then I can choose to accept or deny the invite to add it to my calendar. So that's Apple Calendar and Reminders, two incredible apps that come together in such an intuitive way for you to organize your life. Knowing me, I will still download and try every calendar reminders productivity app that's out there, but I always end up coming back to Apple Calendar for an automated digital calendar and reminders for a checklist that just makes sense. Don't forget to check the description, by the way, for the links to the free downloads I mentioned throughout the video, which will help you get started in calendar and reminders for yourself. Calendar, to-do lists. Now all that's left is taking notes, which means you'll have to check out my video all about Apple Notes. If your Notes app is a place where random quotes and passwords go to die, I'll walk you through all of the hidden and not so hidden features to take better notes in Apple Notes. So I'll see you over there in that.